Nistush? Yes, okay. Okay, so let's, so let's start. Uh, our talk show now. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Welcome to the seventh episode of SCM Talk Show or season four. Uh, as you will recollect, the last episode was in reducing inventory errors. And this episode is on end to end traceability in supply chain management. So usually we speak uh, topics uh, depending on the vast experience of the speaker that we choose. And uh, as usual, uh, this session will also be recorded and uh, the recording is already started. And it will be made available free. Uh, this recording will be made available free on Novax mobile app as well as uh, Novax YouTube channels, both. So like our earlier practice that we have been following, we are putting everyone on listen only mode. And uh, please submit your questions if you have any in the chat box. And depending on the availability of time uh, at the end, we will take few uh, most asked questions uh so so that is what we are going to do so okay let's begin so this is my pleasure to uh introduce uh sorry this is my pleasure to introduce mr agurvinder ahuja so gurvinder is director global end to end traceability program at schneider electric gurvinder has 20 years of total experience in electrical industry out of which 12 years in supply chain and logistics warehousing distribution supply chain. He is a functional expert in logistics domain, uh, specialized in distribution center operations and ERP systems. His expertise include deployment of distribution centers, in source, outsource, from concept to physical installation, based on upstream and downstream flows deployment of ERP systems in distribution centers such as SAP WMS, Oracle Transport Management System, <coughs> auto put away strategies, uh, customer process capability solution integration and deployment, kitting, staging, stolen, uh, shortened lead time, etc., etc. So deployment of performance system in distribution centers driving continuous improvement, optimizing cost and improving efficiency. So a lot of experience in logistics domain. And he was responsible for structured implementation of Schneider performance system. And this is based on uh, our Toyota production system in all distribution centers. So he's certified SPS auditor uh, for DCs, integrated management system auditor, domain expert for SAP distribution execution, Lean expert, he managed end-to-end -end services supply chain, including a critical SLAs of four-hour delivery. So what we call as precision supply chain. By education, he has done his MBA in marketing from IMT uh, Ghaziabad. He also completed his postgraduate diploma in logistics management from Indian Institute of Metal Management. And uh, he also passed his CPIM Basics of Supply Chain Management Exam of Apex USA. Uh, so I, I'm not sure, uh, Gurvinder, whether I missed any of your achievements. Uh, anything that you'd like to add? Thank you, Mr. Tulsian, for the thorough introduction. So you have covered most of the important aspects of my background and experiences. And I appreciate the opportunity to share more about myself. I just want to add uh, that I've had the privilege of working on a few notable projects on uh, DC's migration and outsourcing internationally, which have allowed me to gain valuable insights and grow both personally and professionally. So I'm grateful for the recognition that I've received for my contribution there. And uh, overall, I'm excited to be here and eager to share more experience, more knowledge and experience and perspective during our discussion. Thank you. So first of all, I should thank you for accepting our invitation to share your industry and practice oriented insight with all of our listeners. So, uh, so let's begin, uh, you know, uh, the question answer format. So to begin with, uh, I would like to explain to you, uh, I, I would like you to explain to our listeners, what do you mean by end to end supply chain? Okay. 
So end to end supply chain refers to the uh, entire process of managing and coordinating the flow of goods, information and resources from point of origin to the point of consumption. Uh, it include activities uh, like production, distribution and delivery of a product or a service. Uh, this include various stages such as sourcing of raw material, manufacturing, uh, warehousing, transportation, inventory management, order fulfillment and customer delivery. So the goal of end-to-end -end supply chain is to optimize the entire process, ensuring seamless coordination and efficiency across all stages from supplier to the end customer. And by effectively managing the end-to-end -end supply chain, organization can enhance visibility, reduce cost, uh, improve customer satisfaction and achieve overall operational excellence. So it involves leveraging uh, uh, technologies, data analytics, uh, collaborative relationship with partners or suppliers to streamline processes and uh, make informed decision through throughout the supply chain journey, I would say. Great, wonderful. Thank you so much. So now can you please explain what is end to end traceability? Yeah, so this is a role which I've taken uh, starting of this year. So yep, sure. So end to end traceability in the supply chain refers to the ability to track and trace the movement of products, component or material from the origin to their destination throughout the entire supply chain journey. It is not like track and trace. We are just, uh, you know, with the GPS, we are tracking the, you know, movement of the goods. So it involves capturing and recording detailed information about each step in the supply chain, including sourcing, production, distribution, and sales. With end-to-end -end traceability, uh, organizations can have visibility into the complete life cycle of a product. They can monitor and document important information such as origin of raw material, uh, recording of manufacturing processes, CTP, CTQs, etc., storage, shipping information, and ultimately the end user information. And uh, you know, by leveraging technologies uh, nowadays like barcodes, 1D, 2D data matrix, QR codes, uh, RFID tags, uh, data analytics, organization can establish a robust system for end-to-end -end traceability, enhancing the supply chain visibility, efficiency, and most importantly, the trust of our customers. So what is the purpose of end-to-end -end traceability and what is the benefit? Uh, there are many, many benefits, numerous, I would say. So, I mean, to start with, I would say the consumer trust and transparency, as I just mentioned. So, end-to-end -end traceability provide consumer with, uh, with transparent, reliable information about the product they purchase. This builds trust as customer can trace the origin, authenticity and ethical practices, uh, you know, associated with the product they buy. Uh, and it can help promoting the brand loyalty and customer satisfaction. Second point I would say is the install based tracking. So traceability enable the organization uh, to know the end user of their products, where their products are getting installed. It helps them to maintain the asset throughout its life cycle. And thus it's become an important uh, source of the revenue also, you know, through through services and subscription. Uh, third one, I would say uh, recall management. So nobody yeah. likes it, but it happens. So in the event of product recall, end-to-end uh, -end traceability enables swift identification of an affected product, allowing organization to take immediate action to mitigate risk and you know protect consumer safety because quality your quality is the customer safety, right? It helps uh, also minimizing the scope and impact of recall, uh, reducing cost and preserving the brand reputation. So if you know that traceability, you can directly go to the customer and you know perform the upgrades or you know replacement and all. If you do not have, you will simply you know fire the guns in all the directions i would say right so and nowadays uh, with the with the globalization and the regionalization i would say uh, countries are uh, coming up with more compliances and regulatory requirements in different industries so many industries have strict regulation and you know standard that requires the organization to provide the detailed information about the origin uh, composition handling of products so Traceability, end-to-end -end traceability, help to meet those requirements also to provide accurate and verifiable data, ensuring the compliance and avoiding the penalties or or legal issues. You know, so overall, I would say end-to-end uh, -end traceability enhances the supply chain visibility, uh, the product quality, customer satisfaction, while uh, uh, ensuring the compliance with regulation and fostering a culture of trust and transparency. 
So I'm sure you have a, some real life example, real life case study where traceability is helped, yep. uh, whether in Schneider or outside Schneider. Yes, for sure. So are so, there any examples you, you can share with us? Uh, regarding the implementation, you mean how to do no, it? I mean, or, uh, after implementation, how does it help the organization? Some case where let's say product recall case or, or some such case, you know? Uh, yes, for sure. So, so no, you must have, so you, you wanted to know, I mean, how the traceability is helping the organization basically, right? Help the organization in a particular case, in particular incidents. Okay, so I can give you examples. So you must have seen the QR codes on the product, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the digital empowerment for the customers. So customer can access the detailed information about the products, uh, country of origin, manufacturing date, sustainability information like carbon footprint uh, or product disposal guidelines. So it allows customer to uh, register their products and avail warranty benefits. So this level of transparency and engagement uh, enhances the overall customer experience. Uh, another case I can give the in the industries, you know, such as automotive and electronics, where product recall are not uncommon. You know, the traceability plays a very crucial role over there. So by having the end-to-end -end traceability, uh, organization can quickly identify the affected product, notify the customers, and take appropriate action to rectify the issues. So they'll help. This helps in minimizing the you know impact on customers and maintaining their trust. I would say, and nowadays the customers are preferring to choose only those suppliers and partners. Basis there are two things. One is the sustainability commitments, uh, the commitment to planet, and the second is the traceability capabilities. And another case which comes to my mind is the uh, I would say the product authenticity. So uh, industries where counterfeiting or uh, unauthorized distribution is a concern through traceability uh, organizations are empowering customers to verify the authenticity of their products whenever they are buying from any channel or a reseller. And uh, yeah, so these are just few examples of uh, how the traceability can benefit the organization and serving their customers better. Excellent. So uh, how do you go about implementing traceability, end-to-end -end traceability? Uh, okay, so implementation of traceability, I would say it involves various steps. Uh, first is, uh, you know, uh, the scope need to be identified, you know, what process, what product or system require traceability. So we need to define the boundaries and objective of the implementation. Uh, second is define the traceability requirements, specify the information to be tracked, such as product components, manufacturing data, supplier information, uh, customer interaction. So, you know, we need to establish the level of granularity, I would say, and uh, specific data point to be captured. Then the data collection and integration. So we need to gather the relevant data, uh, I would say, from, from various sources, from production lines, suppliers, quality control system, etc. Implement the, uh, I would say, the tracking mechanism. How, you know, you, when you're finding the scope, how the information would come. So you need to deploy the technologies like, like sensors or IoT devices or data loggers to capture the real time data. You know, so this helps ensure accurate and continuous uh, tracking. Uh, then uh, data analysis and visualization is another thing. So, you know, leverage uh, algorithm or analytical tools to process and analyze the collected data, uh, generate the uh, meaningful insight and uh, or identify the patterns, verify the traceability data to make it understandable and usable, you know, for the for the concerned stakeholders. Uh, and continuous improvement is one of the thing, you know, you know, you need to regularly review what you are what you are building and you need to optimize the traceability system what you're building, right? Because identify the area for improvement, uh, address any gaps or inconsistencies. So it's a, it's a regular way you need to regularly review that. So see, I would say we need to remember one thing. Huh? In implementing the traceability, it requires collaboration amongst, uh, I would say, in the organization, uh, various different departments and stakeholders. It's an ongoing process uh, that requires the continuous monitoring and uh, adaptation, I would say. So I would assume that a lot of uh, discipline will be also required to enter appropriate yes. data at yes. every point yeah yes so yes, yes. You, you so would you say all the standard erps have the features or you require some specialized software for end to end traceability 
so it depends upon the complexity of the organization i would say you know if and depend upon the product also so if you are having a uh, i would say um, a standard product you know one sku two sku five sku where you know you are selling uh, in batches you are not required to scan or track each individual asset number you know so then it is very easy and depending on your skus you can simply uh, build the system directly in your uh, uh, in the erp itself but look about the uh, you know the organization which are complex or dealing in multiple product multiple uh, in uh, multiple uh, sectors that becomes uh, that becomes the concern you know i i would say the example of schneider electric right so we are dealing in uh, many products and schneider is the company of acquisition so when we acquire companies we we get their systems okay so there is no uniformity across the system so in that case we need to come up with one unified solution which can link with all the uh, uh, different uh, erps or uh, manufacturing execution systems uh, and so that you know you can build the traceability at one stop shop you know one traceability database one source of truth i would say so it depends upon industry to industry product to product so just a thought came to my mind since i am using a laptop yeah so th this laptops have serial number right yes so from the serial number can i track uh, if i implement end to end traceability which component what batch number of the component come from which manufacturer exactly yes so that's where the that's where the uh, you know traceability starts so the serial number of the laptop what you have so this is the asset number so the company whom from whom you have bought this laptop so this is the finished goods of that particular customer and they would be tracking that okay with this finished good this laptop is registered under the name of mr ravindra tulsiyan right so this is the this is the install base information what they have now uh, in order to in case they have any critical component which could be a safety concern for you okay the component what they have used so what what organization would do they would track each component serial number or each component batch number with the supplier name also from where they bought linking with the serial number the finished good serial number of the laptop so that in any case they 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 come up uh, later and maybe from the supplier if they report that okay my this batch of production or this component had this problem and then the quality manager or the quality department of that particular company decides that okay no we need to go for a recall it's a safety concern for our customers so with that if they know the linking of the component serial number with the finished good serial number where all they have gone and with that finished good serial number if it they know okay it has gone to mr tulsian they could simply call you and tell okay boss we have this problem we are sending our uh, representative to replace this component or maybe we need to call back your part so this is how the traceability is built up and that's how it is adding value to the businesses and the uh, safety for our customers great wonderful thank you so uh, i mean it sounds very very complex to me uh, collecting all this data at various points of time and you know linking all of them uh, you know to various production orders or maybe uh, if let's say it's a line layout you know so in the line uh, what are being assembled and which components are going sounds like little bit complex so what are the challenges uh, in implementing uh, these kind of system end to end traceability and what are the risk involved i would say you know implementing the traceability come up with you know certain challenges and risk it again yeah. it depend upon the product and the organization landscape processes or system i would say but let me just answer you know the i will i will try to give you some key points or the common ones so first is uh, as you mentioned that it is very complex and all that yes so data quality and consistency is the major challenge you know you so ensuring the accuracy uh, completeness and the consistency of the data collected from the various sources can be challenging uh, inconsistent or incomplete data can can compromise the effectiveness of the traceability efforts uh, second point uh, i would say the integration uh, complexity you know when i'm talking about our example people various erps various production systems etc and we cannot have the traceability you know go to each system and all so we need to build up a common one so integration complexity is another one so you know from multiple systems or platform it is it is a complex story especially when you are dealing with the legacy system i would say or a different data 
format. So ensuring the uh, seamless data flow can can pose challenges. Scalability is another another uh, form of a challenge. I would say you know the system to handle the large volume of the data and accommodate the growing operation can be a challenge sometimes. You know the bandwidth. And so generally uh, the preferences uh, go for the cloud one. Don't go for the on-premise with the limited uh, storage capacity. Cost implication is also another story. I would say it requires investment in technologies, infrastructure, and training, and the cost associated with the data collection, storage, uh, uh, system maintenance uh, should also be something which is to be carefully considered. Cyber security is another one. I would say uh, nowadays you you know with the increasing threat, uh, cyber threats uh, nowadays uh, cyber security is the another uh, challenge. So collecting and storing the sensitive data throughout the value chain uh, can raise the privacy or the security concerns. So proper measures should be in place. And uh, internally, I would say because uh, one person cannot build the traceability, so stakeholder collaboration within the organization. So uh, it, because it involves, uh, you know, collaboration from multiple stakeholders, suppliers, uh, factories, uh, distribution centers, you know, so the willingness from everybody to a day to that traceability standard, what you're leading out, you know, can be a challenge. So it may require change in processes, systems, or behaviors, right? So managing change through communication, uh, you know, of benefits and addressing the resistance is is crucial. I would say for successful implementation. So I hope I'm able to clarify the, the risk. Yeah, the actually, you know, actually, this, so thanks so much. But you know, it sounds very challenging to me since you mentioned the legacy systems. You know, yes. So let's say some organization coming from legacy who's not uh, monitoring, uh, I mean, who's not doing traceability. Yeah. And then you know mm -hmm. the system that you are talking about, uh, complete traceability, end-to-end -end traceability. Yes. Uh, this could be a very major change. You know, for employees to capture data, to enter data, to have discipline. So, uh, what normally most organizations do? Do they go some step by step? You know, uh, in building the complexity, or they do implement concept um, the entire complexity at one go? Okay, so. Of course, uh, you know if it is if it is a high value, high cost item. Of course, uh, the decision cannot be taken in one go. Uh, when when you take a project like this to build up a traceability, uh, of course it will have some phases. Uh, so the the most critical one uh, would be considered first. You know the highest impact. And it also depends. So traceability is not like that. You know it is not like fun to have the traceability. Traceability is is required when actually it is adding value to you guys, right? So product like if I would say. Um, uh, FMCG, you know, when fast moving consumer good, the e tables and all. Of course, it require also, you know, because the quality is involved. Uh, but tracing them at the last uh, retailer level is, is a challenge, you know, with the batch also. So it depends, but that is not actually required also. But it does not have a much of a relevance as compared to the uh, uh, automobiles or uh, uh, or the electronic products, uh, you know, or the electrical products. I would say which are actually having a, or actually pose a risk of safety to the customer. So it depends upon uh, the requirement. And of course, uh, these things cannot be done in one go, uh, never. So it should be in phases. Yes. I think pharma industry is another example which requires high traceability. Pharma is 100% on traceability because they cannot survive without it. <laughs> You're absolutely, right. absolutely. <laughs> yes. So you work with some pharma industry where you know traceability is part of their documentation. Exactly. Yeah. It's a legal requirement. To, there. Yeah, legal yes. requirement. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So do you have to continuously monitor? I'm sure, uh, I mean, traceability is working properly or not. I'm sure people can fall back to the old habits and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, they can, uh, you know, whatever implementation we do, you know, it can go bad. So do you have to monitor it continuously or do you have to do something about it? I would recommend, yes, it is essential to continuously monitor the functioning of the end-to-end -end traceability system. So continuous monitoring helps, you know, you to ensure the accuracy, reliability, and effectiveness of the implementation. So regular monitoring is required. You never know uh, some bug has come and you're not monitoring and you're losing the traceability day by day. Big chunk. It requires the monitoring for sure. Yeah, and... Uh... What kind of change management is required in the organizations? I mean, I I have had experience of implementing ERP, several ERPs. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. and i think change management is most difficult job yes so yes, yes. in traceability how do you go about how do you handle you know change what kind of okay. project organization you set up or something so organization setup i would say is uh, uh, all the touch points uh, which you want to cover into the traceability even i mentioned the you know identify the scope so all the touch points who are which are there i think the people from each respective department uh, should be involved that and the buy in from the management or the department leader should be there for sure uh, uh, you know to take off the project and uh, uh, what was the first question you asked sorry i missed it so i'm saying you know how do you uh, how do you manage the change Ah, you know, change. because okay. people are most critical, right? Yes. So people are most critical for sure. So I think uh, uh, change is the only constant thing. It's a, it's a very old thought, but it it's still valid actually. So if you need to grow with the time, you need to change. So uh, that holds good in not only in traceability, even in your uh, you know the technology upgrades or things like that, your product upgrades as well. Even even in your learning also, every day you need to learn, you need to upgrade yourself. Even on the human, it applies. So so change management applies to everywhere. Uh, but I would say one thing over here. Uh, whenever we uh, take these kind of projects right we always need to see that we should not be you know reinventing the whole wheel we should be looking at what we already have and what is actually required to do we should not be you know doing everything from the scratch so i can give an example and you give the example of a legacy system right uh, so i'll i'll give an example like that so in when when i was implementing the traceability there was a thing that uh, when my factories were dispatching the goods to my distribution center right and my distribution centers are also maybe sending to their satellite dcs or or do, to the customer we need to the the baseline of the traceability is the serial number as you mentioned for the laptop example it depends i was capturing the serial number into the handling unit you know if you talk about sap basically so uh, when you go for a picking in sap environment or any normal wms uh, you go with the handling unit story and when you are during your picking cycle you are scanning the serial number and the and the serial number is going into the handling unit uh because we had various system uh, some of the legacy erps were not having the functionality of having the handling unit Okay. so the thing is one thing was that okay no no i need to go for an erp change or we need to have the functionality first of all or building the handling unit but that's not the priority my priority is i need the serial number linked with the customer sales order so what we did is we designed the solution like that which was a easy and quick win that okay let's have that receive let's have the serial number recorded directly in the delivery itself and then from there we built up the solution to the traceability system right so so i hope uh, i'm clear on this so we should not be looking at doing everything from the scratch so we need to see what is there what is not and uh, should be doing uh, the you know very minimum or uh, the necessary change only what is required so so since uh, you mentioned distributors uh, you know uh, one new question popped up in my mind do you have to go and implement at distribution centers also which is, which we don't belong to you and the retailers distributors retailers dealers you know all that uh, I, I, even at that level very very good point i would say because traceability doesn't complete without the end user information yeah, right yeah, and yeah. distributors are the middleware i would say right so from your erps from your system you, to whom you are billing you can only record that now the very valid question is how to know and i think i can extend your question you wanted to know how to have the end user traceability right. uh, do you want distributor also to track okay so uh, we do not ask distributor to do that we expect the customers only to do that so for that also we built up various uh, uh, solutions so for an example i mentioned the qr code right so qr code on the product you scan the qr code it asks for the registration you can register and then that information comes to your traceability you know where the, your product is installed right second thing is uh, uh, we also give because we are 
mainly into B2B segment. So we also give the softwares to maintain uh, their assets actually, right? We call it facility expert. So customer can register and they can maintain all the assets over there. So through that only they can request for the warranties, uh, maintenance request or, uh, you know, all these things. So that's, that's all the another forum, another mode of getting the end user information. Uh, third is uh, we have call centers also, right? The consumer care, customer care, what you call. When customer calls, you get this information, right? So there are there are various ways through which you get the uh, uh, information. We do not ask distributors to generally track it. But one more thing is also there in case of recall and uh, and if I talk and talking in a general scenario, right? Not in our industry, maybe some other industries who are working with the distributors and dealing in the small products, right? And uh, so, and for that case, in that case, if you have a recall, how would you know? Because you only have the information which is up till the distributor. So then, at least you know, okay, to whom you sent, uh, you know, which serial number has gone to which distributor. Then distributor knows their customer. Eighty percent of the customers are repeat customers, right? Not everything is like. Uh, off the shelf or you know on a retail shelf sale so at least they can also say okay i generally i sold to these, these customers they can simply call them and then through that at least we can have some traceability correct so this is another way of doing it it's not 100 uh, percent perfect i would say on track but yes still you have some chances to do because this yeah, is so not actually, in your control yeah this yeah, so actually, is not in your control that's right yeah sorry yes yeah, uh, some of the products that i buy yeah. You know, they say that a warranty starts only after you register. Yes, exactly. Right? This is the one so, way. Yeah. <laughs> Even in the laptop, so, it's like that only. Huh? You go to, I think, Lenovo or Dell, they, they simply say that. You register the product, your warranty will start. Simply. Yeah. So so it's <laughs> yeah. a way of capturing the end user. It's a way data. of capturing the end user, exactly. Yes. Yeah. So different industries have different practices. Great, great. Wonderful. Yeah. So can you please give some case studies where uh, it's helped the organization end to end traceability, help the organization serve their customers better? I think I um, uh, I just uh, informed earlier, I gave the examples of, you know, automotive or electronics where the recalls are not uncommon. So, uh, you know, the it, it plays role over there, uh, you know, uh, um, you take example of uh, the uh, the cars recalls from Honda or anybody, how they are able to, because they have that traceability. Whenever you're buying it, uh, they are registering the uh, vehicle in your name. And that's how uh, they could able to reach you whenever they need something. Or even nowadays uh, in automobile, you have the uh, uh, software upgrades as well. So if they do not have the traceability, they cannot. Even in my car also, if I, I see, you know, one fine day, my my screen got refreshed and, you know, with new features added, not yeah. doing anything. So, so, yeah, so technology is also advancing and building, you know, and these, these and these, this is, this is powered by traceability only. Uh, yeah. Organization know where their products are. So that actually, uh, I, 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 I remember a case where uh, Toyota recalled, uh, you know, a lot of airbags from Takata, which were not opening. Yeah. Uh, I think so. Uh, I think unless they have this data at the end user level, yes. they will not be able to recall the products. Exactly. exactly. And I think I don't remember my previous Honda car or uh, one before that, mm -hmm. they had replaced the locks, uh, yeah. you know, so and they asked us to, go to a service center and they replace all the locks of the car. Yeah. So they yeah. know which which asset is having the lock problem. So they yeah. so they have the component traceability linked with the asset traceability and the yeah. customer also. Another case I remember is that uh, uh, I think Tesco uh, was the retailer where there was a complaint that, you know, in the beef they had horse meat. Uh -huh. And... Uh, I think they had to trace back and found, you know, who's the who's the culprit who is you know, contaminating the beef with horse meat. So, so you know, these are very difficult situations, you know, to have. If yes. customer makes a complaint, uh, very, very difficult situation for customers. So, uh, in terms of cost benefit, I'm sure this is very, very costly to collect all this data and keep it and so on. Uh, so, are there any legal requirements, any penalties if you if you cannot do it, or 
uh, how do you how do you measure cost and benefit uh, i mean how do you evaluate both so cost and benefits i would say it, again you know it depends it depends upon the industry to industry yeah. like pharma company as you mentioned uh, b- before they have a legal requirement right and uh, i can also give an example uh, not for india maybe i'll give you an example of america now america has come up with the concept called made in america they also had it but they strengthened that uh, that law uh, which which says uh, something like that that uh, they need to track the uh, the uh, you know the the tier 1 components also for whatever they are producing and they also want to track that uh, out of the tier 1 component 60% should be made in america so they wanted to know from who is the origin who from whom you are buying you know which country is producing and you are buying from them and then putting into the product you are manufacturing in america and then uh, you know it is being used uh, in america so it it, it varies from uh, uh industry to industry country to country region to region and uh, one when it comes to the legal requirement i think then cost uh, uh, become secondary because you have to comply yeah. if you want to be in the business and how about some lawsuits do you have in a situation where customers have gone and filed a case and you know company had to pay huge uh, penalty or yes and uh, yeah i i do not want to name name the company but yes there have been cases where uh, where the people were put behind the bars because of non compliance okay okay great so i think in those industries will be very clear decision i think uh, yes. you know to have traceability exactly uh, yeah. Yeah. so uh, can you share some uh, i mean how do you came into supply chain i mean you you did your mba in marketing yeah and you ended yes, up in yeah. supply chain how come was it by chance or by your wish or desire or or what i would say it is it is the destiny uh, even before marketing i would say i started uh, i started to become a chartered accountant okay so i okay. cleared my foundation <laughs> also first year <laughs> Okay. And then, and then, uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, when when you are young, you 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 know you you think a lot, you hear a lot, and it influences you. And uh, I I I had that opinion about myself. No, no, no. What I am doing, I am going to spend four years over here. Let's let's get into the industry. So uh, I left uh, CA in between. I did my graduation in commerce, but and I and I started to work. I uh, joined one company uh, who was manufacturing cables that time in New Delhi. I joined as a GT over there. You know, so I completed my graduation uh, with that, and then I had an interest to no, no. I think marketing is a good one because I was into the industry. So marketing influences me. So I did my MBA in marketing, and I did. Uh, Um, I was in marketing for almost four years, and then um, in my previous organization, uh, they were actually getting into the setting up of the distribution center concept. Right? They were having different factories, so they wanted, uh, you know, they were supplying from different factories to one customer, and customers were like, "What are you doing? You're sending me, you know, three different invoices for different different product. Why can't you send me one invoice and put together one go?" so then they thought okay let us you know get into the setting up of a distribution center start stocking and then serve customer from there and i was part i was uh, added to the core committee of that and that's where my uh, you know the the journey started to know what supply chain is so i started to know what is abc fmr stocking criteria <laughs> and things like that and from there there is no going back and uh, and then i ended ended up in schneider and then i thought okay let me you know do one more uh, post graduation in supply chain so i did that from imm then then i did my uh, uh, i attempted cpim and uh, i did cleared bscm i did not clear the not cleared i did not attempt it for the second paper because i thought CACP is better, so then I enrolled myself for CACP. Okay. So that's how the the journey is, and that's where I am. Yes. So looking back, uh, I'm sure you're happy in supply chain. <laughs> yes, yes, I am. Now, now I'm a truly, purely, solely supply chain guy. Yes. So, uh, can you share some uh, 
happy moments aha moments in your career in supply chain with our listeners uh, that you you still remember that you still take pride in and still it uh, makes you very very happy that you achieved that you did that or something like that i believe for you know any supply chain person all the moments you know when 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 their <laughs> customers are feeling delighted because of their support and actions are all our aha moment huh? there have been there have been many such moment uh, but but i would like to highlight one uh, remember in 2020 when when covid hit india and country uh-huh. went into the first lockdown uh-huh. everything was shut and and situation was panicky you know but he was allowed to go out to police men were there with the dandas beating people who was there on the road and that time uh, i was managing the services supply chain you know supporting the warranty and maintenance contract for many utilities like banks uh, electricity distribution companies cellular network providers stock exchanges and even hospitals you know so during that time warehouses were closed because it was a panic thing okay closed means closed no guideline what could run what could not run etc so warehouses were closed no form of transportation so that was the time you know when we needed to explore the best possible means in order to ensure that our customers are supported because these are utilities right so engaging the resources to take special approvals from government you know to open the warehouses or uh, getting some special approval for the uh, you know some vehicles to operate with special things you know working closely with the customers because they were also in panic what will happen you know uh, so mobilizing the supplies with the support and collaboration with many stakeholders i would say it was the greatest challenge you know which we overcame uh, almost every day every day was a challenge and we were solving the challenge you know every day and uh, you know during during first and second lockdown during those two months so you know i would say when people were sitting at home during lockdown watching uh, netflix or doing shares trading accessing online banking and talking over cell phones so there were people like us actually who were working at the back end you know 24 by 7 in order to ensure the services continuity so we got a lot of appreciation from our customers for our, for our agility i think i think that was that was the best aha moment and i think i uh, i was uh, uh, part of the evaluation committee for some case studies mm-hmm. i don't remember from which organization but uh, i it somehow comes to mind that you know in slider that time during lockdown people were monitoring quality remotely sitting at home yes uh, you know uh, the what do you say the contractors who are producing parts or something like that and they are able to you know monitor production sitting at home uh, uh i would say other way around uh, not i think this was not the scenario for us uh, i would say the uh, when you when you have the fat testing right when customer used to come to your facility to do the testing uh, we have we have uh, done that uh, digitally through the high speed cameras uh, you know showing them digitally all the uh, equipments uh, uh, measurements uh, traceability everything that was that that's what we did and uh, when we say quality monitoring means uh, uh, asset monitoring we did because many of our products are uh, connected products so remotely also we can monitor the health of the equipment which is installed at the uh-huh. customer place yeah okay. so i would say those were the things where we were involved and we we helped to satisfy and uh, serve customers digitally great great wonderful yeah so uh what is your advice if some other organizations have to implement end to end traceability if they have to adopt this uh, first of all uh, would you suggest them to implement end to end traceability uh, and why and if you suggest them the how to go how would you say they they should go about it okay so i would say if if they have a legal legal uh, uh, you know complexity then there is no point it is it's a it's a go go no change and uh, rest is again it depends upon their need uh, their products their customer needs also or maybe their uh, uh, their uh, uh, presence in the market if it if market demands it uh, and customers demands it yes they should go for it and uh, my advice uh, would be based on my experience so i would advise the other organization to consider the following so number 
uh, embrace the digital transformation because this can be only achieved through the digital transformation. So invest in digital technologies and platform that enable the traceability across the supply chain. It includes digital capabilities of the existing manufacturing or logistic system. And uh, maybe the cloud based solution can also be seen. Uh, you know, standardization is another thing. Standardize the data and processes. So, establish the standardized formats, processes to, that allow seamless information flow across different stages of the supply chain. So, this ensure consistency and accuracy in data collection, you know, and, uh, and uh, could bring the effectiveness. Uh, third, I would say is. Um, because it is end to end traceability, you need to collaborate with your suppliers and partners. So foster collaboration and strong relationship with the suppliers, partners, the stakeholders involved in the supply chain. Encourage them to adopt uh, uh, traceability measures and share data to ensure the transparency and traceability across the entire value chain. Uh, data security, cyber security, privacy, uh, uh, leverage emerging technologies nowadays you know th things are coming very fast so have a tap on the uh, new technology so leverage those uh, like blockchain or artificial intelligence machine learning which which can enhance the capabilities so that's one and uh, and most importantly communicate uh, transparently with the customers because whatever you are doing, you are doing for your customers. So highlight the traceability measures and practices adopted by your organization to build the trust and confidence, right? So once you show this additional capability, customer, you know, try to trust you more that yes, you have a complete hold of your product. Now, since you mentioned blockchain, how useful blockchain is in implementing end-to-end -end traceability? And is it required must or optional or you know what would you say the relationship between blockchain and end to end traceability okay so again it varies from the industry to industry when i say blockchain means uh, uh, i would say in case of the product authentication right you can use blockchain to give you the uh, unique code uh, for your product. It could be a serial number also, random serial number which blockchain is providing you and through that you are building the whole traceability and uh, because this is unique in, in its own sense, uh, it cannot be uh, copied or cloned or thing like that. That that's that's the uh, first thing which I say for for uh, blockchain and uh, uh, and uh, but it also depends if if your uh, uh, product range is limited, then blockchain is effective. But in case your product chain and your processes are complex and you dealing with multiple stakeholder, different kind of uh, uh, you know parameters, and you cannot change everything, then you need to go with the uh, the, uh, the cloud based solution, linking everything using the using the uh, current information what you have and use that only to build the traceability. Wonderful. And actually, since you are a practitioner and you have built your career in supply chain uh, and you have you all, I'm sure you also uh, sit in the interviews for hiring people in supply chain. So yes. what would you suggest that our uh, you know listeners do in terms of career development uh, to accelerate their supply chain career? I would say um, so learning is the key. OK, continuous learning. Stay updated with the latest trend technologies and best practices in supply chain management. Uh, pursue professional certification, attend uh, industry conferences, participate in webinars, etc. Networking is another thing. You know, you have a lot of uh, uh, digital places to network. And when you go to these webinars, conferences, etc., build up your network. It's very important. Build a strong professional network within the supply chain field. And, uh, you know, uh, it will help you to connect with the experts uh, and it can also help you, you know, to have the valuable insights, uh, opportunity for collaboration and potential career advancements as well, right? And uh, 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 I would say seek uh, diverse experiences. It's important. Look for the opportunities to gain uh, new experiences in different areas. So this can include maybe rotation uh, in in the any organization and or getting into the cross functional uh, project. So it will help you to enhance your skill set. That's important. Uh, and uh, 
in supply chain now uh, it's very important that you should uh, always focus on developing your soft skills uh, in addition to the technical skills cultivate strength uh, you know the st strong soft skills you know communication leadership problem solving uh, adaptability uh, seek mentors uh, it's uh, you know spending time to learn the whole thing yourself it's important if you seek mentor you can learn faster with other experiences right so it's important and uh, last one i would say so stay agile and flexible so supply chain people you know the it should be in their dna you know the agility and the flexibility because supply chain can never work in one go you have to be agile and flexible to support your customer so it's constantly evolving so be 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 agile and flexible yeah thank you very much gurvinder so i think we have uh, some questions from listeners uh, so nistush uh, uh, will you be able to ask questions or you are into a low bandwidth yeah. area yeah i am into low bandwidth area but i think i would be able to take this up so first of all gurvinder sir uh, thanks a lot for this excellent information and uh, the insightful session uh, okay. a lot of people would have learned new things about reliability today in different industries so the question is related uh, uh, related to when we spoke about traceability in the industry so the question is from mr hirok what about other industries like service 3pl telecom etc where we do not have adaptability to softwares on traceability service 3pl means we are talking about uh, uh, third party logistics services outsourcing of uh, the uh, operations or of telecom or what is it so he he meant uh, services as a different uh, industry 3pl okay. as different and telecom is different okay 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 so so i would say first of all services uh, services uh, you are saying that uh, um, uh, how we can build up or uh, uh, or you saying it's it's a challenge over yeah. there how we can build up okay. how we can build up okay so services again it depends upon service industry you mean uh, kind of intangible services right not the tangible ones yeah yeah maybe yes so on uh, on services uh, i guess because it is intangible uh, it's very simple i would say you only need to know your uh, your uh, service user whom you have provided what kind of service that's it i think it's it's the simplest way uh, you know to build up rather than building up the product traceability and uh, telecom uh, was the next right service 3pl and uh, and telecom right 3pl uh, i need clarity what do you mean by 3pl but in telecom uh, telecom is anyhow is having the traceability right because uh, if i talk about the cellular providers uh, you are already registered whenever you're buying a number when you when you are getting uh, a, a mobile number you already registered so traceability is there from the day one even on the mobile phone also you are uh, you're registering yourself so i may is tracked through that you know or maybe nowadays uh, uh, if i may not track when you have bought uh, you are already using google for your uh, uh, you know navigation or thing like that and you already logged in in your android phones or your apple phones so you are already traced uh, by by the provider so traceability is already there i think this is something that is used in cyber crime detection right uh, they use i mean internet traceability Yes, it is. It is cyber crime. I mean, they are detecting so many things. I do not have much of a knowledge. It's government thing, but yes, I would say they have much more uh, visibility, yes, and tracking. So you know, what I would do is I would just ask Mr. Hero to unmute yeah, sure. uh, himself and just explain yes, the yes. question a little bit more. Sure. Mr. Hero, you can unmute yourself and uh, ask the question. I'm not sure if he's able to do that. I think he's that. not connected. I think I'm. I don't see him. Yeah, he's he connected. He's connected. Yeah. All right, not an issue. Uh, so any which ways, um, we are going to share the details of the uh, uh, the speakers with with the people. 
So if they want to connect, they can connect directly with uh, you on uh, LinkedIn sure. and, yep. uh, you know, they can take it ahead. So yes. we do not have more questions here from the audience. So I think I'll just uh, will uh, will stop it here for today. Uh, so yeah, he just messaged that he's in a low, low bandwidth area. So okay. uh, whenever we have the full question, we'll probably have it up to you, uh, Mr. Sure. Sure, so sure, once sure. again, thank you so much for taking out time and uh, speaking with us and being a part of SCM talk show. And uh, once again, thanks to Mr. Ravindra for being a wonderful host and hosting the seventh episode, which is the second last episode of this particular season of SCM talk show. Uh, we'd be having our last episode uh, in December, on the 22nd of December, I believe. And uh, okay. thanks to all the audience for staying connected till the fourth season. And, uh, you know, I'm sure you, you have a great learning from the details and from the talks that we have from different speakers. If you love it, please spread the word among your friends and family. Let more and more people join uh, the talk show and get the knowledge which is available free of cost. And if you have missed the uh, session, you can always watch it over our YouTube channel and, and, and our app. Uh, so thank you so much, everyone. Uh, thank you to the speakers. Have a great weekend ahead. Thank you thank and you. have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you.